the bee stings Kate's breast and then Anthony sucks the venom out of her. Hi, I'm Simone Ashley and today I'm breaking down Bridgerton with Elle. The first scene that we're going to watch is episode one and it's the horse riding scene where Kate and Anthony first meet. Careful now! Whoa there! What I love about this scene is that it grows from a place of loneliness from both of these characters. Anthony catches Kate when she's in her hidden element. She's away from her family. They've just come to London literally the night before. I think she knows that she probably won't be able to enjoy much time on her own. So she finds a sense of freedom and um, escapism in just riding off at dawn on her horse on her own. You enjoying your victory lap? Oh, fuck I think we see a parallel in that with Anthony. His form of escapism is indulging in brothels and drinking, followed by a lonely ride at dawn. So I think their stars are really so aligned at this moment. And I think it's such a beautiful thing that we've brought to screen that, that right time, right place moment for these two characters where they've met each other. Perhaps we pretend this encounter never took place. You allow me to go my way and you go yours. Trisha Brock directed these episodes. She was always reminding me of the task at hand um, for Kate. She can't be seen when she's riding alone. Nothing can get in the way of her plan um, for what she wants to do with her sister. And I had to keep that in mind throughout the whole scene. But even the most headstrong Kate um, can't help but be charmed by Anthony. You worry about being seen. I worry about meeting strange men at parks at dawn who fail to leave me alone with all of their questions. Your secret is safe with me, I should not tell a soul. How grateful I am. Kate is quite used to people giving up on her formidable nature, but Anthony challenges her. He plays with her and there's a lot of banter in this scene. <laughs> is that what that was? A race. Or was it not? Does one not need actual competition for a race? We could say that if we had decided on a finish line together, but alas, we made no such agreement. Ah, I see you are not one for losing. I shall have you. And what I love about this scene is it starts from this lonely, dark place at dawn to the sun rising. And then these two people, really giddy, he makes her smile and she rides off. We've not yet been introduced. I'm afraid that is not possible. Not when I have a victory lap to enjoy. He's stuck in her head. It's a really twinkly moment. I remember um, being on my horse, his name was Mufasa, and with um, the horse riding stunt team around me. And one skill that I learned was um, to just constantly talk to the horse, talk to the people around me, um, because horses are so intelligent. And when it's silent on set, they, they're almost preempting the word action and they're ready to go. So I would just always be muttering or talking to him or talking to whoever was around me. Um, and I thought that was really fun and really sweet. And Johnny would be cantering around <laughs> in circles on his horse Jack. And we actually did this scene in our chemistry reads. Um, so it will always be one of my favorites. Coming up next, it's scene two um, in episode three, <laughs> and it's the beasting scene. And we see this at the end of the episode. I did not mean to disappoint her last night. And I did not declare myself. And I would like to thank you for she not She should not be disappointed for long. You must assure her, I still intend to propose. Between these two characters, they've been constantly trying to suppress this feeling that sparked since the moment that they met. And I think it's so interesting that it takes something as small as a bee to stop them in their tracks, to bring this truth to the surface. The only feeling you are in fact capable of engendering, my lord, is that of discontent. Do not, do not tell no, me no, stand still, what damn it. to do. No, no, do not do This is only a bee. Ow. Tom Verica directed this scene and this episode. And I, I had a phone call with him just chatting about the character of Kate and how she's quite intuitive with animals. And um, she plays the role as the elder sister and the protector of her family. Um, so I think she's quite skilled at remaining calm in high stake, aggressive situations or high adrenaline situations. You heard. What? Anthony's obviously reliving his past trauma and he's really overwhelmed. He's having a bit of a panic attack, but she, she sees immediately that he's incredibly vulnerable at this moment. I am unharmed. And I remember saying to Tom, like, it's very similar to how she 
behaves with her sister and her family and the animals that she's around. And I think at that moment, it's out. They haven't articulated in words how they feel about each other, but all the looks, um, she's broken the touch barrier between them, which was a huge thing back then in that century for a woman to touch a man. And she places his hand on her heart as a way to kind of bring him to the present and calm him down. And once you go there, there's, there's not really any going back. What I love about Bridgerton, it's what happens in the private moments. They're constantly surrounded by people watching and they've always got to hold this decorum, but they have this beautiful private moment together um, that's so human. And then immediately it's back to, did anyone see? Is anyone gonna say anything? Have we been caught? From the books, the scene plays out quite differently, but whenever we were rehearsing it, um, we would kind of pretend that we were going there in the books. Um, the bee stings Kate's breast, and then Anthony sucks the venom out of her. It was a way to just make it lighthearted on the day. Um, maybe it was all you had to be that moment. Be there, that's a good pun. <laughs> Finally, the last scene that we're gonna watch is the final dance between Kate and Anthony. Are you going to ask me to dance? I remember listening to Nothing Breaks Like a Heart by Miley Cyrus, and I put it to Chris Van Dusen and I said, I really want this to be in the show. And he took inspiration from that and then made the song for this dance, Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus. Jack Murphy, our amazing choreographer, really applied that to the dance. I remember Johnny would say, when Kate and Anthony dance, they move like a unit. And you can really see that in the movements of this dance, it, they swing like a pendulum, like a wrecking ball. I really wanted to honor that. And I remember feeling a bit nervous on the day, much like Anthony's line in the scene where he says, just keep looking at me. I kind of listened to that and I just made it all about Anthony. To Kate, she thinks that this is the last time she'll ever see this man. She really just wants to live in this moment for the rest of her life. There's a line actually in episode six before Kate and Anthony kiss for the first time, where she says, um, I want to suspend time, to delay the inevitable, to for a mere moment, not to think of what comes next. And I'd like to think if Kate did leave for India, there might be a future where Anthony's sitting in the library in Aubrey Hall and it's thunderstorming outside and he thinks of Kate and she's in India horse riding, um, remembering this man that she met in London. Goodbye, my lord. So the, Jack Murphy added that really beautiful move where they bring their hands down and she's looking at him and he's looking at her and they're just taking each other in for what seems to be like the last time. I've chosen these three scenes specifically um, because I feel they encapsulate um, Kate and Anthony's uh, journey together, their love story, and also encapsulates the partnership um, that it was between myself and Jonathan Bailey, who plays Anthony. So season three, um, there's only so much that I know um, about season three. We, we haven't received the scripts yet. I think what's so amazing about this show um, is the, the family dynamic that we've all um, watched from season one to two. It really mirrors to how I felt filming last year. Um, I wasn't a newbie for long. Um, before I knew it, I was just a part of it all. And I felt very welcomed and guided and seen and heard. And I, I think I'd like that for Kate. Um, she's quite used to in season two, running away a lot and being stubborn and isolating herself. And I'd like to think she kind of gets over herself at this point. And um, yeah, I want her to be there for the family just as much as they were for her. Um, I think it's a bit scary and you feel vulnerable to be depended on and to depend on others. Um, but that's one thing about Anthony that he never gave up on with Kate, um, his sense of family and his sense of community and really strong arming her into it. I'm just as curious as the fans as to what's gonna happen. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching this Bridgerton breakdown with Elle. Don't forget to watch Bridgerton season two on Netflix. And if you wanna watch more videos like this, subscribe to Elle.